Today I want to talk about how to decide if you should see a therapist or not. All the kind of questions you can ask, all the things that go into that, how to make your therapist-client relationship the best fit, all of that. I'll go into all of that today. And remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and make sure you hit the little bell if you want to get notifications when new videos come out. So how do you decide if you should see a therapist or not? So I get this question in a lot of different ways. Uh, just this week, someone asked me on Instagram if they thought, if I thought that they should see another therapist, even though every time they've been going in the past, they haven't been able to implement the things that that him and his therapist talked about. So he was wondering if it's worth going, even if he's not able to implement things, or if I had any suggestions on how to better implement things and that kind of stuff. I get a lot like of people when they're leaving a therapist or something happens and that relationship ends for whatever reason, insurance or moving or illness or whatever, that they have to see somebody new. A lot of people have mixed feelings about that and starting that over again. So there's a lot of different ways that this comes up, right? I also I'll also get um, people asking if they think my their situation, if I think their situation, sorry guys, I'm all over the place. If I think their situation um, warrants therapy, because some people want help and feel that they could use help, but they don't know if their situation is bad enough or whatever enough to warrant help, uh, or if they will even get the help that they want, or if that's even possible, it changes in that is possible. So a lot of different questions come up around this. And I really think that obviously I'm biased, but I think it is really beneficial to see a therapist. And I also think it's really important to, to find the right fit and style of therapist and therapy for you. So I think sometimes people feel pressured or they rush into something or they go to someone just because that's who their insurance covers. And I'll, obviously I get that, the cost is a major, a major factor here, but I think it also is really worth taking the time to make sure you, you are a good fit. And if you don't feel like you're a good fit, don't stay with that person. I mean, sometimes therapy is just uncomfortable, so that is something you can work through, but sometimes it's just not the right match and not the right style of therapy or just not the right person. You know, that you have to have sort of that, that interaction and that kind of connection to be able to go to those really hard places. So I think it's worth doing some research on and looking into and talking to people and and asking questions. So people will email me and tell me about their situation and ask what I think or ask what my style is or what kind of services I offer. And I think all of those are really good questions. And that's also why I take usually the first call, the first session to decide what the person needs, what they're looking for, what might best suit them. Because some people don't really want a lot of phone calls and some people really do, right? So some people are like to process more with writing. So we'll set up more messaging options or more writing prompts or more homework. And some people have to talk it out. So we'll set up more phone calls or we'll just work around those things, right? And, and it also depends if some people like more structure or prompts from me and some people don't. They just need a space to talk it out and sort of feel it all out. So everybody is different in that as well. And your therapist should take time to evaluate what's best for you. So I think that when you go to somebody, they sort of look at what's going on and they figure out what's best for you. If they're trying to fit you into their one little box, then that may not be helpful for you unless that box is really what you need, right? So some people really specialize in CBT and that's all they do, which is pretty structured therapy and structured sessions. And if that's what you're looking for, then that's a great fit. But if that's not what you're looking for and that's all they offer, then obviously that's not a good fit. And trying to force yourself into that isn't gonna benefit you. So take the time to talk to people, interview them, right? Figure out if it's, if it's right and if it's going to work. See what the options are. With online stuff, it even opens that up even more, right? You don't have to go to somebody just in your area. You can have 
everything open to you. Uh, but I also obviously know that finances are, are a big part of it. So sometimes you are limited by a smaller network, but usually you can still have some choice within that, you know, some different providers within that. But I do think that it's worth going to therapy, even if you aren't really chronic, right? I mean, I think it's good for everybody. And again, yes, I'm biased in this, but I really think it's good for everyone to be able to talk things out and get a different perspective and get some help and some tools and some grounding. And it's definitely helpful for me personally to be able to do that too, to make sure that I'm processing everything and I'm looking at my blind spots and working on things in different ways because it's really hard to do that by ourselves. We only have our one perspective and we always have blind spots, we have thinking errors, we have all these different things that are at play. So even if things aren't really bad, those things are at play and, and everybody could benefit from working on those. Everyone should benefit, should work on thinking errors. Thinking errors, boundaries, how you feel about yourself, your self-talk, all of that, I really think everyone could benefit from. And obviously if you have some deeper stuff and some past trauma, that you haven't worked through that you need to work through that is something that that will keep coming up until you face it right and and same thing with addiction and all of that stuff it it's stuff that sometimes we're good at hiding and pushing away but it will keep popping up and those things also are long-term kind of therapy situations so sometimes people will come and they just need help working through this or they need some tools or they're more short-term clients or short-term therapy but sometimes, especially with a bigger illness or bigger trauma or those kind of things, that's, that's longer term. So I think it's also important to note that this could take you a lot longer than you want. It usually does. I think everything, no matter what we're doing, it, it often takes a lot longer than we'd like it to or than we planned because it, it's harder and change is hard. Changing habits is hard and rewiring the brain is really hard. And, it takes a lot of time and trauma is one of those things that takes a lot of time and, and work and effort and, and you have to be in the right space to face different things and sometimes you're more ready to face something and sometimes it takes time to, to get up sort of, not even just the courage, but get to the place where you're safe enough to share that. So, I mean, that's that's also the, the guy that I mentioned that reached out to me on Instagram I, I think that even if you're not in this space to move into the serious action phase yet, that it's still worth getting support, obviously if you can afford it and if you're in a place that you can do that, because that can help you get there. So I have clients that will talk to me and they'll be processing things, but they won't be ready to take the, the big steps yet. And they're just not in that place yet. They're moving through things. They're they're building trust with me, they're facing some of the stuff in themselves that they've been ignoring and they're working through things. And eventually they get there and they have more of the aha moments and they start making some changes and they start putting more time and effort into their healing and into their stuff. But even if you're not ready to do that yet, I think that therapy can help you get there, right? So if you're able, it's, it's helpful. And even if the only time that you're really processing things and thinking through things is when you're in therapy, then that's better than nothing, right? I have some couples there, couples in therapy that that's the only time that they work on anything or talk to each other, really. And obviously for this relationship to be sustainable, we need that to, to keep increasing. So they are talking to each other and working on things outside of session, but this is a place to start. And one hour or two hours a week is better than nothing right so so we have to start somewhere and it's okay if you if that's all you have I can only give an hour a week or every two weeks or I can only give an hour every month but that's where I'm starting and I'm gonna keep building from there so yeah my biased opinion is that go to therapy if you can if you're able to you can afford it if you can find the right fit do it uh, groups are also a good option if you're looking for support or you have you know, a particular need that you wanna talk about or get addressed, or if you just can't afford full sessions, right? And I'm starting more of those groups as well, so there'll be more coming on that. If you wanna reach out to me or check on my website, I'm gonna do some more 
online support groups. So you have that option as well. So there's all kinds of options within, you know, different financial tiers and all of that stuff, right? Okay. So if you have any questions, reach out to me, let me know, comment below, or send me an email. Check out my website, you can submit anonymous questions there. All right guys, have a good day.